Focus, focus. Good. Hello everybody, welcome back. Jordan Nelson here. Today we're gonna to talk about a transition that you all can use in your wedding films. Hopefully it's something that will look seamless, but will make people who are watching the film be like, that was pretty cool, whoa. Just kind of that extra little bit to make your wedding film that much better. So I'm gonna show you an example of the transition that I just did here around my apartment, how it could be applied to wedding films, and then some things to keep in mind so you don't mess it up. So here's a quick shot that I just took in my apartment. So breaking that down, all it was, was a shot of the chair and then I was moving into the wall there so that it was dark. And then I was moving out of another dark area and still moving in the same direction to the right to show that other chair in the hallway. So it felt like one fluid movement, but it was in two different locations, two different places. Now the weather's pretty rough outside, but if it were nicer out, I would definitely do it out there to show you what you could possibly do in wedding films as well. But some examples could be doing that behind a tree. So maybe you have the couple on the left side of the frame instead of the chair on that first shot and then you're panning right and then you go behind a tree and then you cut as soon as the entire frame is filled by the tree and then maybe at the reception you find another dark surface kind of like maybe the dark surface of the tree and you move in the same direction and then show the reception. So it looks like it's one fluid shot but that was a transition from you hanging out with a couple and doing those shots and transitioning into the reception. Like that is a really smooth way to do that. And it just looks really good and professional. So especially using it as a transition between different locations during the wedding day, but also maybe in the same location, but just a different angle. So maybe you're still shooting just a couple out there by themselves, those shots. You can still use this transition without having to transition to another part of the day. So within that part of the day, you could do one shot where you're maybe 50 feet away from the couple and then you go behind a tree or something, or maybe there's a, a building that you can and kind of go behind and then get the full frame covered by whatever the surfaces of the building or the tree and then maybe pick a different angle or get closer to the couple or have them get closer to another tree or something like that and then move in the same direction starting behind the tree or behind another building moving out from behind it and then now maybe you're five feet from them instead of 50 it's like oh that was a smooth transition where you were far away and now you're close just in the course of one movement, even though those are two totally different shots. I'm excited to try to use this in the wedding films I'm doing this summer. What I've learned just by practicing with this is that it does take some forethought. So you need to think through one, the speed at which you're moving, because if you're doing one slowly, and that first shot's really slow, maybe going behind a tree, and the next one you're whipping really fast out from behind a tree to show whatever you're showing the second shot it's gonna look really jerky and not like one fluid motion. So you're gonna have to think about that. You're gonna have to remember the direction that you were going. For that first shot, if you were showing something and going right into that wall, and the next shot you came out moving left in the opposite direction, then it's not going to look like one fluid movement. You have to think about that. So you probably need to plan out exactly what two shots you're gonna be doing this with or how, how it's gonna work, what you wanna use it for before you just go in and, and try doing it. Or just get some shots of you panning behind things and then panning out from behind things and then trying to figure it out all in editing when you've been moving the wrong direction, you'll be going the wrong speed. So make sure you're thinking about that. Another thing to keep in mind is focus. So this is not a situation where you wanna be using strictly autofocus. You want to be using manual focus because if you're coming out from behind a wall, the camera's gonna have to search to find the focus of whatever the subject is and then you can use it. But you want it to be all in focus from the first shot through and automatically have focus on the next one. So what you wanna do is grab manual focus of the subject before you get behind the wall. Even for that first shot with that first black chair that I did, I still wanna have that manual focus because I don't wanna start going behind that wall and then you can start to see the focus change onto the wall instead of the chair. So for both of those shots, grab manual focus of each of the subjects, have that locked in, and then you can pan back and forth and do that movement without losing the focus on the subject. Because if you're on autofocus, it's gonna be switching it up when you're moving behind certain things. So for a wedding film, when things are pretty run and gun and you're just not super confident with your manual focus, even your focus peaking setting and going through and trying to, to dial it in and looking at your LCD screen like, oh, I'm not quite sure even with the focus peaking, I'm not 100% sure 
um, if it's as in focus as I want it to be. So it really depends on the camera that you're using. I'm not gonna speak to what every camera does or how they work. I don't know if you have an entry level or a more professional grade camera, no idea. But for my Sony a7 III, I can go ahead and get my autofocus and then just toggle over to manual focus really quick. So I set my focus with auto and then I can toggle the manual so it locks it. So it's not gonna be autofocusing anymore. So I know I have the right focus because my autofocus is really good and I saw it kind of dial it on there and then I was able to switch to manual and keep it there. There's also a thing called spot focus on my Sony a7 III that all I have to do is touch a point on the screen, it'll grab focus of that subject and then it'll automatically switch to manual. So that point on the screen isn't always the thing that's gonna be in focus. It's not like that spot within the frames in focus, but that subject is in focus and now it switches to manual automatically. So if you have a Sony a7 III, there's something to look into as well. I'm not sure what other cameras have that, but it's called spot focus. I just tap the screen, it auto focuses on the subject and then switches to manual focus automatically. So that's also really helpful. I don't have to press any buttons. I just have to tap my screen and we're good to go. So if you have a Sony a7 III, check that out. So one last part of all of this I want you to consider is that I haven't done this in a wedding film, but I have been practicing this stuff. So one thing I wanna convey here is that you can learn and grow outside of just doing the weddings. I just need the weddings in order to make better weddings. Now that's absolutely gonna help. Like you booking weddings is going to make you a better wedding filmmaker, but you outside of it, practicing certain shots, getting to know your camera, that is huge. Like on the wedding day, it's probably not a great idea for me on the fly to try to learn this thing when I have lots of other stuff going on, other shots that I could be getting and doing and knowing that they're gonna look good. But now that I've gotten to practice this, I kind of know what I have to do with my focus, with my speed, with my direction. I've gotten to practice and learn it. Now going in the wedding, I feel much more confident that this shot could actually work and look really good. So just make sure that you're out there practicing these things, all the things that you're learning online, make sure that you are applying those and not just going to the wedding day like, I watched some videos on it, I'm gonna try it out. Practice it beforehand. Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you like this video, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. I have a lot more videos just like this on the channel related to both wedding filmmaking as well as video creation in general. So if you're into that, consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching. See y'all in the next video.